Hello. Two really high priority topics in Israel are high tech and fertility. And today we're going to hear about how those two come together. Our special guest today is Iran Eshed, who's the CEO and founder of a company called Fairtility. Hi, Iran. Hello, Bruce. Thank you for having me. Pleasure. So please start by telling us a bit about yourself. So I've been uh, in the tech scene for over 25 years. Um, my background is in engineering. Uh, it's not in bio uh, or sciences. Um, most of my career was actually in semiconductors and broadband and wireless communications. Um, I founded some companies, sold some companies. The latest one is a company called Altair that was acquired by Sony in 2016. Um, then I branched into a very, very different area, which is fertility. Wow. And what drew you to that area? Um, so there's the, you know, the romantic, uh, story and there's the real story. The romantic story, which actually happens to be true is, um, I was looking to do something very different and more of a do good type of a thing that touches people uh, and that has added value beyond just technology. Uh, and I was lucky to come across two very talented uh, people. One is a professor and a fertility specialist, uh, Professor Asaf Ben Meir, who runs the uh, IVF unit at uh, Hadassah Hospital here in Israel. And the other one uh, is a very talented uh, technology person called Itai Ehrlich, um, who was doing his PhD work, and they were researching a specific aspect in embryo development and how AI and deep learning may be applied to it, and just blew my mind. I said, this is what I want to do. That's great. So what does fertility do? So what we, what we do is we um, apply AI and data science and I would say a broader set of automation and digitization techniques uh, to take a process, uh, IVF, in vitro fertilization that has been around for 40 plus years uh, and had some experience, some innovations, but nothing in the data space and completely transform it from something very subjective, inconsistent, manual, uh, with um, outcomes that are suboptimal to something that you would expect to see in 2025, digitized, automated, standard, um, allowing uh, a lot of advancement in terms of you know data collection, analysis, research, uh, decision support tools for doctors, for embryologists, for assessing uh, the highest probability embryos, uh, oocytes or eggs, um, stimulation and and so on. Now, what is it about Israel that made it a fertile uh, place for this kind of activity? So Israel is an IVF hub, essentially. Uh, it is by far the highest uh, number of IVF uh, babies per capita. Uh, we could have a long discussion on, you know, the drivers for that, but it's essentially... Uh, it's it's a government uh, supported initiative that has to do with uh, you know, demographic strategy, and there's also, uh, of course, the Orthodox community, which uh, has a much higher number of uh, child average number of children per capita. So all these together um, created um, an amazing hub that just creates a lot of data and a lot of innovation. And this is how we started. We engaged with five hospitals. That's how we got our initial data set to start training these AI models. After that, we expanded dramatically. Today, we're you know, all over the world, but you have to start somewhere. And getting that first starting point is really difficult when you're a, you know, a small, young, company that just got started. So it was very good for us to have this supportive environment. Commercially, I would say that not necessarily the most attractive market because of different dynamics have to do with HMOs and reimbursement and all of that. 
uh, but a great place for collaborations, you know, research partners, and we've definitely capitalized on that. So if I understand correctly, you were able to bring together Israel's strengths in the technology field, in the AI field, along with the, the special commitment to the fertility issue. Is, is that correct? Yeah, that's very true. And, and there's a lot of, obviously, innovation and specifically in AI, deep learning, and data science in Israel. The nice thing about what we're doing is um, that the ecosystem here is quite developed as far as fertility treatments are concerned. There's obviously, you know, pathology and radiology and other areas in which you could apply AI. There's not that much advantage in doing it here versus doing it somewhere else in one of the large like medical centers in the U.S. or in Europe. But as far as f fertility is concerned, Israel is like a, you know, is a superpower in a way. Okay. And and at the same time, the, the work you're doing, there's interest from abroad. Can you tell us a little bit? about that fertility is kind of like nutrition right i mean people want to have families babies it's 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 on a constant rise but the challenge is that uh, fertility rates are declining as a result of many different factors sometimes people think of fertility as a you know female thing but it's not it's well researched that roughly 50% of infertility um, causes are male infertility factor. And it ha has to do with our lifestyles and nutrition and a bunch of different things. So fertility is on a decline. It's, you know, one of six couples on average worldwide suffers from some sort of infertility. So it's a huge market. Uh, despite the fact that here, maybe we have a higher percentage of babies uh, per capita, we have a very small population. If you take a much smaller population, a much smaller percentage, but apply it to a much larger population, Japan, US, Australia, uh, different countries in Europe, the numbers are quite significant. And there is a thirst for innovation because this process has not seen, it has seen two or three innovations on the procedural, on the uh, science side, but not on the technology side. So okay, it and, makes a big difference. Here and around the world, the, the types of people, organizations that are your clients, <clears throat> who are the consumers, the hospitals, the professionals? Who, who's the typical client? So our business model is a B2B business to business uh, business model. And our clients are fertility mm -hmm. clinics, fertility centers within hospitals uh, or academic uh, centers and the platform, which is called Chloe, is basically a set of uh, tools that are you know orchestrated together to um, automate and digitize and uh, enhance in terms of efficiency, patient experience, and clinical outcomes the whole journey from the point in which there's the first infertility assessment of infertility cause and all the way to a transfer and hopefully success. And if not a repeated cycle where you learn from the, you know, uh, data of the first cycle to apply towards the next cycle. That's terrific. Um, you and I spoke earlier about uh, each area of technology having its own challenge, each application, it, it own challenges. It, um, what were some of the special challenges moving from semiconductors to the healthcare field? Wow. Um, you know, I sometimes uh, say that had I known, maybe I wouldn't have, uh, you know, jumped into this, which of course the answer is I would. Uh, because one thing about us uh, Israelis is we we're not afraid to fail. Uh, quite honestly, I think that's one of the big things. But healthcare is uh, is a is a heavily regulated um, area. And when you marry that with AI, which is a new, relatively new concept, at least in the healthcare space and infertility, I can say confidently, there are no um, AI deep learning, for example, FDA approved products. Cool. You know, side note, we expect to be the first ones very soon, but, uh, but in essence, uh, you're not just changing a market, you are uh, 
change managing a market. Uh, healthcare professionals tend to be somewhat conservative and there's a good reason for that, right? It's all about not just efficacy, but safety. Uh, and they don't typically like changing what they do unless they see very robust science, clinical evidence behind it, as well as regulatory approvals. And that process is something that uh, I I did not experience. Like going through FDA is one you know is one heck of an experience. Uh, I did not see that in my previous life. Now that being said, we always tend to see that to to think that what we do is now is like the most complicated. So no, I had my own set of challenges in in that previous industry, uh, but these ones are fresh. Hey, the scars are fresh. <laughs> but they're, they're healing and we're getting stronger every day. That's great. Sounds like you're doing great stuff. Thank you for the work you do. Thank you for joining us here today and best wishes for real success. Thank you so much. And thank you for inviting me, Bruce.